And I will be your ever, ever so eccentric host. Out here on Portobello Road in the rain. It was not raining when we arrived here, but then shortly thereafter started raining on us. We're about to get hit by a car, the things I do. I'm gonna give you a few little glimpses of Portobello Road on a rainy Monday. Of course, the brawlies are prominently displayed because <laughs> it's a rainy day. And lots of touristy shops here full of Oxford Street kind of knickknack souvenirs. There are all kinds of shops along Portobello. Lots of antiques, various kinds of clothing stores, and booths on the pavement selling jewelry, knickknacks, and all sorts. This is a very tiny tea set. Oh, look. Molly was asking about dollhouse stuff. Here it is, Molly. Here is a display that can handle being out in the rain. And yes, I did notice that there was a magenta suitcase here and a magenta bag. Antiques and interesting collectibles in here. Of course, I like these pictures. Wouldn't that be pretty as a vase or a vase? My friend Krista was losing her mind in this store full of collectibles. This is totally her jam. As for me, it gives me an attack of clutter overwhelm and nearly puts me in the lunatic asylum. This here looked like a cabinet for storing homeopathic remedies maybe, what do you think? But honestly, this store was a fascinating collection of all kinds of bizarre things. And I did find it rather amusing. Though after a while, I needed to get back out on the street and I wanted to check out what other shops were along the road. Hatter 87. Wonderful hat shop. We need to get this steampunk hat. Now that's a pretty hat. Do I need a magenta fedora? And then we did step in this store, the Highland store, full of beautiful wool clothing and tartans. And of course, I thought of my friend from Meals to Travel when I saw this because her name is Eliz and she's Scottish. And of course, this caught my eye, lovely magenta wrap. And I may or may not have bought a tie for my husband for our 30th anniversary. shopping for clothes and you might see a rabbit underneath. What a beautiful bunny. He's my child. Aw, <laughs> fur baby. We had the most fun in this store, meeting the manager. Hi, I'm Darren, and this is 
Dara. Dara. My name's Darren. <laughs> Are you serious? Darren. I'm absolutely serious. Look at me. <laughs> Look at the head. Does that not scream serious? Or does that scream Midwest kind of hit, kind of in the hills type thing? It's all good until you hear a banjo. <laughs> Business in the front, party in the back. I need you to tell me about uh, about how you're a Mockney. What's a Mockney, right, okay. So if you're born in London and you've got to be born within the sound of the bow bells, which is East London, you're called a Cockney. Mm -hmm. But when your parents and your grandparents moved out of London, you got someone like Essex, you're called a Mockney because you are mock, you know, well, you're just not a real Cockney, so. Okay, and go. what do you call someone who walks in with a grumpy face? <laughs> <laughs> not oh, not that one, no. No, I have to. Oh, you're talking to, about the bull. I have to edit that out. Tell no, me the family friendly the one. The family friendly is the bulldog licking weed off a thistle bush. That's the expression they pull. I've, or, or, I've not yet seen a bulldog licking weed off a thistle bush, <laughs> but we can only assume that they have the face of the people that come in here that are miserable. We can only imagine call people who have a grumpy face. Oh, what was the one I said? Oh, uh, you look like you're chewing a wasp. Look like you're chewing a wasp. Yeah. I'm gonna remember that yeah, one. Yeah, that's Thank a really you. good one to have. <laughs> you need to tell me the name of your store. I. I'm Darren, this is Stumper and Fielding, 107 Portobello Road, W112QB. Phone number is plus 44 0207 229 and I will be your ever, ever so eccentric host. So welcome. You don't need to say the 44 because all my subscribers are British. Uh, right? Scrub the 44, it's 0207. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so while Darren was telling me that he's 54 years old and no longer gives a damn, then my friend Joel decided to take apart one I'm of his 52, I'm 53 in September. <laughs> that looks amazing. Love the Americans coming in here, jazzing it all up, making I was rounding it all up. about them. I was I'm rounding, rounding up. up. I'm, do you know what? I'm going to borrow money off you next time. You can tell he's a Virgo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Virgo too, brother. Okay, so so Joel then decided to take apart his display and he got this. Hey, look at this wee little jacket. It's like the cutest thing in the history of ever. They're Virgos. We have been to Portobello Road in the past when all the food markets have been open all up and down the street and those are so fun but you don't want to take your chance on street food and you want to eat someplace absolutely delicious that's just around the corner from Portobello Road go to Leto. We ate lunch there and actually <laughs> we've been there twice since we've been in London this trip because the place is so fantastic. They have so many good pastries. Every time I step into an antiquarian map shop, I think of my brother Brian who collects them. And I know he has bought a few of them on this very road. In fact, he and his wife Lori are the ones who first introduced us to Portobello Road years ago. I even posed next to a blue door with Lori. The idea was to pose in front of the famous blue door from the Notting Hill film, but that one was always packed with tourists, so we posed in front of the blue door that was a few inches to the left. And now this Portobello Road hat shop is trying to draft off the blue door's popularity. In case you are wondering, there are also a few magenta doors in the area, as well as some other shops trying to cash in on Boris's love of Notting Hill. Here is the travel bookshop, which is where Notting Hill was filmed. It's no longer a bookshop, it is a souvenir shop for tourists. So here's an appropriate book bag for today. This bag gives me mixed emotions. Sad to see the Queen's reign come to an end, but I have happy memories of last year's Jubilee celebrations that took place around the time I filmed this video. There were a few food stalls further down the road, and these tables of fresh produce actually looked fantastic. The strawberries especially, as well as all this other lovely veg. made falafel. Oh look, magenta condiment. So I just eaten a huge lunch and I couldn't eat at this falafel place, but I was so curious about this magenta condiment that they gave me one to try. It is a pickled turnip. 
that's pickled in beetroot juice. Mmm. Whoa. <laughs> that is so sour. It would be really good on a falafel with all of the other condiments and a pita. I'm showing your delicious food so I can share with my friends because we don't really get freshly made falafel where I'm from. And they just gave me this freshly made falafel to taste. Ooh, that looks fantastic. Thank you. People keep giving me food even though I'm not hungry because I just ate. This is really good falafel. Freshly made and crispy. Thanks so much for coming to Portobello Road with me today. Sorry I couldn't show all of the amazing things that are here. It's a pretty fun place. And if you're going to come, don't come on a Saturday or Sunday. Come on a rainy Monday. Much less crowds on these days. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the quick tour of Portobello Road. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.